Hi, this is Vanessa. We're glad to be back. And here is the news for today. Cambodia court to activist case over sex traffic and film. Cambodia's Supreme Court orders labor activist Ratrot Moni to be retried as he nears the end of his original 19-month jail term. He was arrested over his role in making a documentary about sex trafficking that angers the Cambodian government, which dismissed it as fake. The Supreme Court decided that the appeals court trial and its decision was not correct. So the Supreme Court has turned the case back to the appeals court for a retrial. So as a human rights activist defending on human rights, I think all that level of the courts are doing this perhaps to deny freedom to suspect, particularly my client, because as of now he only has five more months of his two-year jail term to complete. He has not committed any crime at all, but the decision today seems to have done damage to my client. <laughs> The ruling party of Cambodian's Prime Minister Hun Sen was waged a crackdown against what it says are critics of the government, including human rights advocates and opposition politicians. Flash floods caused by heavy rain, parts of Indonesia's Sulawesi Island, inundates by muddy water from swelling rivers. Drone footage shared with Reuters shows submerged villages in the North Luwu district in southern Sulawesi Island, which was hit by torrential rain. After four days of search and rescue operations, finding 36 people dead while dozens were still missing. Around 4,000 people were evacuated from the area. Indonesia frequently suffers from floods and landslides, particularly during the rainy season, though the situation is often made worse by the cutting down of forests. Over 200 of Thailand protest demand the resignation of the government and the dissolution of parliament defying a coronavirus ban on gatherings in one of the largest street demonstrations. <laughs> Those at the student-led rally near Bangkok's Democracy Monument against the year-old government of Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, the former army chief who ousted an elected government six years ago. Organizers issued three demands such as the dissolution of parliament, an end to the harassment of government critics, and amendments to the military written constitution that critics say virtually guaranteed victory of Prayut's party in elections last year. There were also some veiled public references at the protest to the powerful Thailand monarchy, despite a law forbidding criticism of the king. Police were on standby but did not move to stop the protest. The monument was cordoned off with signs reading that no entry without permission, maintenance in progress. The demonstration dispersed at about midnight but organizers say they will return to the streets in two weeks if their demands were not met. Public opposition to Prayut has been growing since last year's election. The court has dissolved the second largest opposition party, giving his ruling coalition firmer control in parliament. China and Thailand make cooperation on regional solidarity and prosperity. Chinese President Xi Jinping made the remarks in a telephone conversation with Thailand Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha says that China stands ready to work with Thailand to cement solidarity cooperation among regional countries and safeguard the sound momentum of development and prosperity in the region. China and Thailand have supported each other and joined hands to overcome difficulties and both under pressure to prevent imported cases and steam domestic resurgence and China ready to work with Thailand to intensify experience sharing while keeping regular epidemic prevention and control measures in place and economic development. China will uphold the vision of a community with a shared future for mankind and work with the international community, including Thailand, to support the World Health Organization better playing its role, strengthen research and development collaboration in relevant drugs and vaccines. She suggested should better synergize the Belt and Road Initiative and Thailand's development strategies such as Thailand 4.0 and Eastern Economic Corridor, promote cooperation in such innovative fields as e-commerce. The Thailand site hopes to take the 45th anniversary of bilateral diplomatic ties as an opportunity to deepen Thailand and China friendship and cooperation, strengthen collaboration in such fields as economy and trade innovation and poverty alleviation, promote Belt and Road Initiative cooperation and lift the partnership between the two countries to a higher level.
The protest shed tears after Philippine lawmakers deny license to broadcasters at odds with President Rodrigo Duterte. Philippine lawmakers vote against the renewal of 25-year franchise for top broadcaster ABS-CBN Corporation, ensuring a media conglomerate that has clashed with the country's president. And I look at what is happening, and you know, in, in my eyes, my personal eyes, not I cannot represent my family, I cannot represent ABS. It looks highly political, highly, highly political. But that being said, I respect their decisions and I respect what they have done, um, I will accept it. It's, it's painful. A legislative committee overwhelmingly supports a House Working Group assessment that ABS-CBN was underserving of the grant of the legislative franchise, a decision likely to anger activists who say media freedom has come under sustained attack under the rule of President Rodrigo Duterte. It's very sad for everyone, not just for us, but also the thousands of employees and the millions of viewers of ABS-CBN. ABS-CBN has been a tenor hooks since Duterte took office in 2016, repeatedly threatening to thwart its renewal bid. Though Duterte enjoys a supermajority in the lower house, his legal advisor Salvador Panelo says the president had no involvement in the decision and doesn't intrude the affairs of an equal branch. The resolution to deny ABS-CBN's franchise application is hereby adopted. Pursuant to Section 49 of the Rules of the House of Representatives, all House bills and House resolutions re relative to the grant or renewal of the franchise application of ABS-CBN Corporation are hereby laid on the table. The move against the broadcaster comes as concerns grow about human rights and media freedom under Duterte in a country with a reputation for being one of Asia's most liberal democracies. ABS-CBN, which says its 21 radio and 38 television stations reach 70% of the country's 107 million people, can appeal the decision, but minority lawmaker H.L. Lightman says that will likely fail because there was pressure from leadership. Thousands of protesters gathered around Bangkok's democracy monument to demand new election in Thailand. Thousands of protesters demanding sweeping political reforms gathered around Bangkok's democracy monument, since a state of emergency was declared to hinder the spread of COVID-19. They are becoming more and more dissatisfied as laws continue to be limit what people can say and do, and throughout the day, the dissolution of parliament changes in leadership and constitutional reform. Scuffles did break out as police attempted to fence protesters in and get them away from the monument, but demonstrators were able to use their greater numbers to push back. Even though epidemic prevention measures are in place, rally leader says they are not going to back down and organize more gatherings if their demands are not met dissolved. I want the government to be dissolved. Also, there are a lot of people criticizing the government and they are not safe, but it should be their right as a Thai citizen. Another protester says they want to have a full democracy. We want to have a full democracy here. The one that we can criticize our leader and we can like examine them, we can like evaluate them and we can talk about like, oh, this is correct or, or not correct or something. So, so I think that's our goal. University students and young professionals were the people who vote for change in elections last year only to see the pro-democracy party. The protests were streamed live on social media so that anyone who could not make it could still participate. Thailand took their support of the global anti-racism movement online with hundreds of people participating in an 8 minute and 46 seconds moment of silence for the Floyd's death. A wave of anger unleashed by the police killing black men in the United States has swept across the globe, sparking protests and calls for an end to police brutality. George Floyd died after being detained by a white Minneapolis police officer who knelt on his neck for almost nine minutes. Yeah, we, we, we have to continue to protest. They have to continue to march. You know, our voices need to be heard. You know, we will, we must get true equality. Um, but violence is, is, is unnecessary. It doesn't need to be done violently. Meanwhile, Pope Francis, leader of the Catholic Church, says cannot tolerate the racism and defend the sacredness of every human life. Cari amici. Non possiamo tollerare né chiudere gli occhi. My friend, we cannot tolerate or turn a blind eye to racism and exclusion in any form and yet claim to defend the sacredness of every human life. At the same time, we have to recognize that the violence of recent nights is self-destructive and self-defeating. 
nothing is gained by violence and so much is lost. Menotti è autodistruttiva e autolesionista. Nulla si guadagna con la violenza e tanto si perde. Floyd's death and subsequent outpouring of anger has prompted widespread soul-searching as part of a sweeping global reassessment of history and racism. Demonstrations inspired by the U.S. Black Lives Matter movement have drawn thousands from Europe, Africa and Asia onto the streets. Many define restrictions on large-scale gatherings brought in the tackle the coronavirus pandemic, which has claimed thousands of lives globally. Protesters have taken out their frustration on a statue glorifying colonialists and slave traders, with several being defaced or removed, and clashes have been broken out between anti-racism protesters and police as well as counter-protesters. Peaceful protests took place throughout Europe, with thousands rallying in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. However, pockets of violence broke out across the continent. In Greece, more than 3,000 protesters rallied in the Athens outside the U.S. Embassy, where clashes broke out with police. Dozens of Palestinian protesters gathered in front of the Church of Nativity in the West Bank city of Bethlehem to protest oppression against black people in the U.S. and the aggression of Israeli forces against Palestinians. Protesters lit candles in front of a photo of George Floyd and photo of Iyad al-Halak, who was shot and killed by Israeli forces in Jerusalem on May while chanting Black Lives Matter, Palestinian Life Matters. Several artists took part in peaceful protest, painting murals of George Floyd to show their solidarity against police brutality and racism. Others have protested peacefully with many demonstrations kneeling in streets and squares, while others expressed their solidarity through artwork and online. Anti-racism protests took hold in several countries, with demonstrators railing against colonialism and the slave trade. The first coal plants are built in Indonesia's coastal village of Suralaya will harm fishing activities and cause pollution in the country. The fisherman Ramidin will paddle just off the beach to catch the seafood that his family is selling for generations. He must use a motorboat past vast and covers barges stuck high with black coal to find his catch in less polluted waters. Yes, we used to be able to catch fish closer to the shore, but since those power plants were built, the waste might have affected the fish, so they went away. We didn't use the motor back then. We only used the paddle to get fish because we didn't have to go out further. Since those projects, the coal power plants were built, the dust from the coal may have fallen onto our houses. There might be symptoms, respiratory problems. We can only care for ourselves on our own. Greenpeace estimates that the Java 9 and 10 twin coal plants will be built and maintained by South Korean and maintained by South Korea's Dusan Heavy Industries and Constructions Company and partly funded with Korean public money. The $3.5 billion project will give South Korea a much-needed economic boost but risk undermining President Moon Jae-in's Green New Deal launched ahead of his election victory. Suhu tersebut jelas membuat uh, ecosystem perairan. President Moon has betrayed the spirit of a Green New Deal because the South Korean government may feel the impact of the coronavirus crisis in the future and they have to help South Korean corporations and earn profits. So we feel that this decision is just meant to help their economy. The economy will not grow in the area where the environmental is damaged. The Indonesian government and foreign companies like Kepco says the plants will use the latest technology which will minimize pollution but local residents remain skeptical because the pollution caused by the project's coal plants will result in over thousands of premature deaths. The new plants are also expected to exacerbate the already poor air quality in capital Jakarta which lies around 100 kilometers away. <laughs> The Green New Deal can lead a new world order of solidarity and cooperation for solving the climate crisis. The lower carbon economy is a global trend. The Green New Deal will improve our quality of life by solving the fine dust problem and raising our industrial competitiveness under the international ecological restrictions which are being tightened day by day. It will also develop green industry and create a massive number of jobs. According to Dastrul Chaniago, Director of Pollution and Environmental Damage Control at Indonesia's Environment Ministry, the government no longer performs on-site inspections to monitor the pollution's level online. We need to make sure that this power plant is using technology that meets emission standards, and we will oversee this, and once it starts to operate, we will monitor this data online. We no longer send to personnel to supervise the project manually on site, especially when it comes to monitoring the plant site and quality standards, 
as to whether the contains mercury as they are using coal energy as a raw material. Mutunya ada mercury itu kalau dia bahan bakarnya batu bara. Indonesia is the world's largest coal producer, has planned to massively expand its electricity generation capacity over the next decade, with bulk coming from the coal plants. Korea Electric Power Corporation, a state-run utility that will partner with Indonesia to build a new 2000 megawatt coal project in Suralaya, which is projected to begin operating in 2024. Thailand's Finance Minister Utama Savanayana resigns amid economic team shakeup. Thailand's Finance Minister Utama Savanayana handed in his resignation in a move that adds uncertainty to policy making at a time when Southeast Asia's worst performing economy is struggling to recover from the impact of COVID-19 crisis. He confirmed his resignation at the briefing comes as the government has been rolling out billions of dollars of stimulus measures in a bid to support an economy battered by the pandemic kids to tourism and domestic activity. Four of us have already handed in a resignation letter to the Prime Minister through his secretary. According to the media reports, Prede Chai, president of the Thailand Bankers Association, is expected to be the next finance minister. For the country to move forward, the resignation will help eliminate ambiguity towards politics, especially to the Prime Minister himself. Utama says long-time economic policy czar, Deputy Prime Minister Somkit Jatus Ripitak also submits his resignation. We, the financial team and the Deputy Prime Minister Somkit Jatus Sripitak have also submitted his resignation due to his health condition, so he can take some rest, which is the same as us. The Energy Minister and the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation also resigned as part of major shake-up of the Cabinet's economic team. A process is underway to pick up a new government of the Bank of Thailand. Both will inherit an ailing economy with interest rates near 0%, a stubbornly strong currency and a mountain of household debt. Myanmar commemorated Marty's Day with flowers, respect and with coronavirus prevention measures. Myanmar commemorated the 73rd Martyrs Day with senior government officials in attendance wearing masks and keeping safe distances from each other to mitigate the risk of becoming infected with the coronavirus. Martyrs Day at one time became extinct due to political crisis. We young people are responsible for preserving Martyrs Day so that it does not fade during the COVID-19 outbreak. I have dared to come to the event to pay my respects as the infection rate of coronavirus in Myanmar has slowed down compared to the neighboring countries. The public were also permitted to attend local commemorative events with appropriate social distancing, but attendance was sparse with many opting to stay at home to watch the ceremony at the Martyr Mausoleum in Yangon live on television. The public is paying their respect to the martyrs and General Aung San in this park with precautionary measures and social distancing for COVID-19 as the leaders have organized the state commemoration of Martyrs Days this morning. We came here out of respect and also to get ourselves political motivation for 2020, the year of transition of general election. General Aung San, who is the father of current state councillor Aung San Suu Kyi, was assassinated in a meeting room at the secretarial office in Yangon in 1947. Myanmar has recorded 341 positive of coronavirus, including six deaths, with 200 more people recovered. And that's for today. Have a nice weekend. We'll see you soon.